Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue thinking about igneous rocks. So this video is going to correspond to section 5.5 of your textbook. So the next thing we need to think about when considering igneous rocks is how do we actually make the magma. Now in order to make a magma we obviously need to take a solid rock and we need to melt it to make liquid rock which we call magma. Now, in terms of solid rock, it's obviously going to be made of solid minerals, and a mineral, by its very nature, has to have a rigid lattice. So the atoms that make up the mineral are all locked together in essentially a stable, rigid formation. So in order to turn something from a solid to a liquid, we need to break some of the bonds between these atoms which make up our rigid material, our minerals. Because of course, as soon as we break some of the bonds, it means that parts of the mineral can start moving relative to each other. And once the constituents of the mineral start moving relative to each other, they've essentially transitioned from being a solid, where everything is locked together rigidly, to a liquid, where things can move past each other and move relative to each other. Now, one of the things that we need to remember in geology is that it gets more and more difficult to break bonds the higher the pressure gets. So pressure will tend to push atoms closer together. And when you push atoms close together, typically the attraction between those atoms will get stronger. And this will mean that the bond will also become stronger. So this is one of the re reasons that trying to melt a rock that's under very high pressure is a very difficult thing. Because the pressure naturally inhibits the capacity of the bonds to break and therefore the rock to melt. Now, what we do need to do though is obviously we need to take our material and we need to, you know, force the bonds to break. So how are we going to do that? Well, one of the ways we can do it is by increasing temperature. So as we increase the temperature, it causes the bonds to vibrate, well, causes the atoms, should I say, to vibrate faster and faster and faster as they have more and more energy. And eventually the atoms can be vibrating so quickly that it can cause the bonds in between them to fail. And when this happens, essentially your rigid structure begins to fall apart and you end up with a situation like this. So we've gone from a solid rigid structure, which we can see here, to a situation where we have constituents that can move freely relative to each other and that's going to be our liquid. So heating is clearly one of the ways which we can encourage these bonds to break, but is it the only way? Can we change other things and thereby encourage a rock to melt? Let's find out. So the diagram that you can see in front of you shows you the pressure and temperature conditions under which a rock will either be solid or liquid. So if we look here, we can see on our diagram we have two variables, pressure and temperature. So temperature is going across the top of our diagram here. It's low on the left-hand side and high on the right-hand side. In contrast, as we move down our diagram, pressure is increasing. So we have low pressure at the top and high pressure at the bottom. Now you'll notice this area here is split into two separate fields. There is a grey field in which the rock will be solid and there is an orange field in which the rock will be liquid. There is also a line that runs down the centre here and this is going to be called either the melting curve or the solidus. And so along this line you're going to have a rock that's going to be both a mixture of solid and liquid. So your rock will be perfectly happy and solid when it's in this field here, which is the gray field, but as it moves steadily towards the solidus, eventually when it hits the solidus, your rock is going to start melting. And at that point, you're going to have a mixture of both solid and liquid. And then eventually once your rock is fully melted, it's then going to continue into the liquid field. So what we've got here is we have four points and we're going to discuss the, the situation for each of these points. Now one thing that I'm going to point out before I go any further is if you look at the solidus you will notice it has a slope to it. So the temperature required to make a rock melt is getting higher so it's going off to the right as the pressure increases. 
Now we've already discussed this, the higher the pressure, typically the more difficult it is to melt a rock. And so the fact that the pressure is increasing is going to cause the melting point of the rock to also increase. So our solidus is going to have this slope that we can see here. So always bear that in mind. Now, as I said, the line, the, uh, the line's uh, slope will increase as pressure acts to keep the rock more solid. Now, how could we change conditions to cause a rock to start melting at point A? So, okay, so this is our rock here. Well, what would happen if we were to increase the temperature and keep the pressure constant? So if we take rock A and we keep increasing the pressure, increasing the pressure, increase the pressure, uh, uh, sorry, temperature, I do apologize. If we keep increasing the temperature, eventually we're going to get a point to a point where rock A hits the solidus, at which point it will start melting. And then once it's fully melted, it will then go into the liquid field marked out by point B. Now, what would happen if we were to increase both the pressure and the temperature at the same time? Well, if we start increasing the temperature on rock A, we're obviously going to start driving it towards the right hand side of the diagram. However, at the same time, we are also increasing the pressure. And so instead of driving the rock towards the right hand side exclusively, we're actually going to start driving the rock downwards as well. And so if we increase the pressure and temperature at the same time, essentially the pressure will counteract the increase in temperature and it will stop the rock from melting. And this will mean that rock A will remain within the solid field. It will not melt. So what happens if we keep the temperature constant but increase the pressure? Well, if we increase the pressure on A, and to keep the temperature constant, obviously A is just going to come straight down. And once again, it's going to remain in the solid field. So when it comes to point A, the only thing we can do to make the rock melt is exclusively increase the temperature. So make the, temp make the rock hotter and eventually you will hit the solidus over here. So what would happen if I had rock C on the other hand? So rock C is starting at this pressure and temperature condition here. So moderate temperatures and moderate pressures. Now we can see C is within the solid field, so it's going to be a solid rock at this point. Now, what would happen if we were to increase the temperature and keep the pressure constant? Well, if we increase the temperature and keep the pressure constant, eventually we drive the rock in this direction and we are going to hit the solidus at point D. And at this point, our rock is going to start melting. And then eventually, if we keep increasing the temperature, the rock is going to become 100% liquid and we're going to move into the liquid field. What happens if we increase the pressure and the temperature simultaneously? Well, it's going to be just like rock A. As we increase the temperature, the pressure is going to counteract the increased temperature. And so all that's going to happen is we're going to end up driving point C down in that direction and it's going to remain solid. Now, what would happen if we were to keep the temperature constant, but change the pressure? So if you were to take rock C and we were to increase the pressure whilst keeping the temperature constant, the rock would remain solid. Because as you can quite clearly see here, we just keep moving down into the solid field. But if we take rock C and we decrease the pressure, what's going to happen? Remember, we're keeping the temperature constant. So as we decrease the pressure on rock C, we actually start to make it come up and eventually it's going to hit the solidus right there and the rock will start melting. And then eventually if, the, if we decrease the pressure enough, the rock will eventually move into the 100% liquid field. So what we have is a situation where depending on what we do to a rock, we can cause it to melt by either increasing the temperature or changing the pressure, in this case, making the pressure lower. So we either need to heat the rock up or decrease the pressure. These are the two most obvious ways in which we can cause a rock to melt. So, okay. So in this instance, we are going to be melting our rock. So we're going to be using exclusively heat to melt our rock. So we've already touched on this before. So here's point A, this is our starting pressure and temperature. You'll notice the temperature is quite low and the pressure is quite low. Now, as we've discussed, if we increase both the temperature and pressure simultaneously, we will drive the rock along this path here and it will remain within the solid field. It will not melt because the pressure will inhibit the increased temperature. 
Now, if we keep the pressure constant, but increase the temperature, we are going to drive the rock along this path until it eventually hits the solidus, at which point it will start melting and it will keep melting until it's 100% liquid, at which point it enters the liquid field. So you can see that simply by keeping pressure constant and increasing the temperature, we can cause our rock to melt. This is sometimes referred to as thermal melting, simply just increasing the temperature of your rock until it eventually begins to turn from a solid into a liquid. So what about our other option? What about changing the pressure? Well, we've already gone and discussed that in the case of sample A here, if I was to decrease the pressure, nothing would happen because it's going to remain in the solid field. So nothing's going to change there. But if our rock was at point C, you will notice it's at moderate temperature, but very, very high pressure. And so the pressure is what's stopping the rock from melting. However, if I decrease the pressure whilst keeping the temperature constant, I send it along this path here. And eventually, as the pressure decreases, it will hit the solidus, it will start melting, it will stay at the solidus until it's 100% melted, at which point it will enter the liquid field and end up at point B. So this is referred to as decompression melting. And this is when you take a rock that's very hot and under high pressure, and you decrease the pressure quite quickly, that can encourage the minerals to begin melting. Now, there is actually a third type of melting, and this is sometimes referred to as hydration or flux melting. And this is introducing an additional component into the system that makes your rock naturally unstable. No, so in this case, it's going to be the addition of water, which is going to change the conditions. So we can see we have our diagram here. We have our solid field over here in gray, we have our liquid field over here in orange, and here is our solidus coming down along this line here. Now, this is referred to as the dry solidus because there is little to no water in the system. However, as soon as we add water, the position of the solidus will change. So here is our rock, and our rock is at point E, moderate temperature, high pressure. And under these conditions, if it's dry, it is perfectly stable, it will not melt, it will remain solid. However, when I add water, it's going to change the dynamics of the system. It's going to take the solidus and it's going to drive the solidus to the left. So one more time, adding water is going to change the position of the solidus. And so we can see that as we add the water, the position of the solidus changes from the dry solidus here to the wet solidus here. And all of a sudden, rock E finds itself in the liquid field. It will melt. So this is the third way in which we can cause a rock to melt. So this is referred to as hydration or flux melting. So one more time, there are three ways that we can make a rock melt. We can heat it up, that's called thermal melting. We can decrease the pressure, that's decompressional melting. Or we can add water, that's referred to as hydration melting or flux melting. All right, that's it for this presentation, everybody, and thank you for watching.